In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the gasket and diaphragm kit on a Ryobi trimmer. The gasket and diaphragm kit contains the gaskets used inside your carburetor, as well as the reed valves and the rubber diaphragm. Because these components are constantly exposed to fuel, over time they'll begin to harden and break down. This process is accelerated whenever the trimmer is left sitting unused with fuel in it. To make matters worse, the ethanol that they currently mix into our fuels causes even more damage. Installing a gasket and diaphragm kit is easy to do, and I'm going to show you how. Gasket and diaphragm kits, as well as many other parts, can be found on our website. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the rear cover. Now I'll remove the two screws that secure the carburetor to the engine. Before removing any of the fuel lines from the carburetor or the lines from the tank, you'll want to make sure that you drain any gas that might still be in the fuel tank. Now I can pull the carburetor away, disconnect the throttle cable, and remove the fuel lines. With the carburetor removed from the engine, now I can go ahead and disassemble it. As I disassemble the carburetor, I like to lay each of the pieces out on a rag in the order I remove them. That makes it easier to remember where everything goes when it comes time for reassembly. Here I have the reed, th reed valves and the reed valve gasket. Also, there's a filter inside the carburetor I'll remove. I'll remove the filter using a pick. Now I'll rotate the carburetor over and we'll begin to disassemble the diaphragm side. There's the diaphragm. and the diaphragm gasket. Beneath the diaphragm, you'll find the metering needle assembly. I'll remove the screw that secures it and remove it from the carburetor. There is a spring in this assembly, so you want to be careful you don't lose these parts as you pull it apart. Now we'll move on to cleaning the carburetor. We'll concentrate mainly on cleaning the carburetor body. I found that you can leave the needles in place in most cases, as long as you do a thorough job of cleaning all of the small passages within the carburetor. We'll also clean the fuel pump cover, the inlet screen, and the metering needle. There's a couple of different methods you can use to clean the carburetor. The first we'll look at is using carburetor cleaner. With the carburetor cleaner, first I'll spray down the entire body of the carburetor, both the outside areas and the inside, and then I'll take time to go through and spray each of the individual small passages inside the carburetor. I want to spend extra time here to make sure I get them clean. The second method we'll look at is the ultrasonic cleaner, and this is my preferred method to clean carburetors. The ultrasonic works by sending a high frequency sound wave through the water. You also add a detergent or a mild soap to the water to aid with cleaning. If you do a lot of repair work, it's probably worthwhile to invest in an ultrasonic cleaner like this. You can pick one like this up for under $100 at most discount tool stores. The ultrasonic is simple to use. I just simply drop the parts inside, set the timer, and then I just turn it on. And now I'll remove the parts from the cleaner. With the parts removed from the cleaner, I'll rinse them off with clean water to remove any residue from the detergent. With the carburetor clean, now I'll use compressed air to blow the water out of the carburetor's passages. Once 
Whether you use an ultrasonic cleaner or not, I found that the small parts are easiest to clean with just some carburetor cleaner and a rag. I'll also clean the inlet screen the same way. Now we can reassemble the carburetor, starting with the metering needle assembly. I'll place the pivot shaft through the metering lever. I'll balance the metering needle on the lever, and I'll place the spring back into the carburetor body. Now carefully thread the needle back into the body and the lever onto the spring. I'll hold that assembly in place and secure with the screw. If you feel that the metering needle assembly needs to be replaced, the full carburetor rebuild kit includes that, where the gasket and diaphragm kit only comes with the rubber parts. Now we'll reinstall the diaphragm. It may seem like it should be the other way around, but the diaphragm gasket goes first, or against the carburetor body, then the diaphragm, and the cover and I secure the cover with the screws. Now I've rotated the carburetor over. I'll first install the inlet screen. A trick I found with most inlet screens is the underside of a Sharpie marker is about exactly the right size to press the screen into place. Next come the reed valves. Followed by the gasket. and the fuel pump cover. And this gets secured with the screw. Now I'll reattach the fuel lines to the carburetor. The inlet line at the bottom and the line to the primer on top. Now I'll reinstall the throttle cable back onto the carburetor's throttle linkage. and I'll secure the carburetor as well as the choke plate with the screws. As I tighten the upper screw, I want to make sure I have the choke plate lined up as well as the wavy washer so it doesn't get pinched by the screw. And now I'll reinstall the rear cover with the air filter.